everyone, and welcome to this pre-recorded version of our webinar on SignMount. My name is Chris Mertz, and with me is Mr. John Kieran, manager of the training department. And together, we want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this webinar, and hopefully you'll be getting something out of this that can help you and assist you in the world of scuba diving. The primary goal of our webinars are basically to inform you and give you the knowledge you need to not only sell a better course, but also to teach a better course. So we want to go over some certification numbers over the last few years, talk about who to market this to, and how our materials can work for you, as well as a training aspect so that this new program and what you need to do to become a side mount instructor. So again, thank you for taking the time. So before we get started, what I wanted to do is I wanted to share with you some numbers that were kind of fascinating to me. Um, when we started this program and we started putting together this slideshow, I wanted to see how far we've come uh, as an organization with SideMount in the last four years. And uh, it kind of reinforces the reason why we created these materials for a SideMount program because it was very clear to us that it has been our fastest growing course. Um, in 2011, the SCI side mount certifications jumped 437.5%. That is from 2011 to last year. So that tells us that side mount is not really only for people that are out there uh, doing uh, technical dives, mixed gas, uh, overhead environment, wreck penetration, cave cavern, you name it. No, there's also a large amount of people that are just doing the sport diving and the recreational diving participating in side mount courses as well. Now, the number that really jumped at me was the number of TDI certifications that have increased in the last four years. 774% increase in certifications from 2011 to 2015. The most mind-blowing part about this is that it was all before we even had materials. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The topics that we want to cover during this webinar is what makes SDI TDI side mount materials so different. SDI and TDI side mount, the reasons to dive it and the benefits, and also the differences between the two. It's a very common question. But more importantly, why aren't you teaching side mount? I just showed you the numbers there's obviously a market for it. So what we want to do is we want to cover the prerequisites and guide you, basically take you from where you are now on to becoming a side mount instructor, if you are not already. What I want to do really quick is uh, extend a huge thank you to all the people that participated in the development of this program. Uh, Pete Naraki, Harry Averill, James LaPenta, Eric Brooks, Matthew Partridge, Tom Steiner, Alain Pocabelli, Audrey Kuddle, and so many, many, many more people that, that had a huge role in this, this program. Thank you all for, for taking the time and the effort. Uh, it's been a really wild ride, and it's just been a lot of fun doing this. So uh, thanks for your participation. So let's get started, shall we? What makes SDI TDI side mount materials so different? Well, they're complete they're flexible, and they're practical. One thing that we did with these pro products is that we really took our time with the materials in order to ensure that we created a set of side mount materials that surpassed the evolution. So you saw that growth happen in the last four or five years, and it took us this long to actually put together a program. Well, we have been developing over the last few years. The primary reason is because we wanted to wait for it to mature. Uh, SIMA has been around for a number of years, but they really just started gaining popularity in the last few. And we are kind of happy that we started production on these materials when we did, because we feel that this program has finally reached a period where the techniques have matured in all the different styles, all of which are unique to a certain needs, uh, environments, they can be shared. Um, you know, before it was this way or that way, or if you were in this environment, it had to be done this way. And uh, based on all the feedback that we've gotten from our side mount instructors that have taught thousands and uh, hundreds of uh, courses in this uh, range, uh, we've been able to get feedback on what really works. So, 
What makes SDI T-Day sign mount materials different? Well, they're complete. You know, it's not just a, a manual and an exam. It's not basically using a how-to book from another author. Uh, basically, what we've done is we've created a, open a, a manual for sign mount, which is a student manual. I'm so you're saying open water. <laughs> a student manual, the student knowledge quest, which comes along with it. Then we have the side mount instructor guide. We have the instructor digital resource. Now the digital resource includes the final exam, the answer keys. It also has a PowerPoint as well as the PDF version of the side mount instructor guide. And it comes in this nice little USB. You know, we don't use the uh, CDs anymore. Before we used to have the digital resource CD. We don't use those anymore. It's so much more practical in these little USB drives. You can put it in your pocket, put it in your backpack, you can throw other uh, documents that you may need for your course or courses on the uh, USB drive and it's just a lot easier to use. Um, instructor, whoops, instructor cue cards and slates. And don't forget, we also have this program available on e-learning. So if you are an instructor for SignMount, whether it's SDI or TDI, you can contact us, whether it's myself, John, or probably the easiest way is reaching out to us at sales at tdisdi.com, and you can get your sample code today. Just call us up, say, hey, I'm an instructor for SignMount. I'm going to teach a class in a couple of weeks, and I want to preview the program. I want to take a look at it before I offer it to my students. So we'll give you that sample code so that you can build your own digital library. And the really great thing about this is every time we update the materials, whether it's uh, update pictures that are outdated or we change um, some edits or we update a paragraph or two, you get all those updates. So whenever you refer back to your digital library and you go to your sample code, you will have all the latest and greatest. It's live. As we updated, you will have it updated as well. So don't forget we also have the uh, feature for your students called Chat with a Instructor. So if your students are running through a side mount program, whether it's SCI or TDI, or any other programs that we offer with SCI, TDI, or ERDI, they have the ability to chat with an instructor. And what we do is we then send you the transcripts so that you can look at them, you can preview those transcripts, and you can say, hmm, let's cover this a little bit more, I want to talk to you about depth, or has this been clarified? You basically have that conversation that your student had with another instructor. So it's really just about keeping you in the loop. So that's really one of the things that, that, that stand out when you look at what makes the uh, materials different from what we have and what other organizations have. But what else? Well they're flexible. You can teach everything with these SCI TDI side mount materials from open water side mount to technical side mount which could be used for rec penetration, um, mixed gas. So you can save money because now you don't have to buy oh, TDI side mount manuals or SCI side mount manuals. And how many SCI side mount programs are you going to offer versus TDI? It saves on inventory, it saves on costs. You just buy an amount, put it on the shelf, Whoever walks in says, this is what I want to do, this is what I'm looking for, I want to become a side mount diver because these are my goals and this is what I want to accomplish. You can say, okay, we're going to teach you the TDI program, grab the manual right off the shelf, you don't have to go, oh, which one do I use? It's one program and offer it to your student. And the same with e-learning. So it's one set of materials basically for multiple programs. And you know, you can use whatever suits your teaching style, e-learning or the manual as well. But it's also very practical. You know, side mount and the benefits of diving with side mount really depend on where you are, the cylinder types that you're going to be using, but more importantly, what are the objectives and what are the goals? And one thing our program does is it emphasizes that there is no one way to do it. Our program actually covers a broad range of equipment, broad range of uh, procedures, and all the different techniques. And it's designed very similar to how our standards are designed, where it gives you, the instructor, the flexibility um, uh, available for you to meet the needs that your divers, that your customers, that your consumers have, and what they're planning on getting out of this program. So 
uh, it's very, very practical in that sense. It's not, hey, this is the one way or the highway to do it. No, it's however you want to teach the program, this program will allow you to do that. Okay? So, what is the difference between SCI and TDI sign mount? Well, what I'd like to do right now is uh, bring Mr. John Kieran on board. As I mentioned, he comes straight from the uh, training department, and he will answer these questions for you. So, John, come on up. All right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here and, and to be able to talk about the uh, the new side mount program and the, the new materials. <clears throat> really excited about it for a few different reasons. Uh, number one, uh, as an active instructor, like most of us here at uh, World Headquarters, uh, we understand uh, just how important it is to have quality materials and quality uh, tools uh, when we're out there in the field and, and out there teaching and, and these side mount materials really really um, uh, fit the bill for that they're they're like Chris was saying they're very flexible and um, complete and they really do a great job at uh, helping us train side mount divers so we're excited about it uh, for those reasons uh, but I'm also excited to talk about it because uh, this project was a lot of fun uh, I can't begin to explain how much fun it was working with uh, the authors, the contributors, um, as well as uh, our training advisory panel that helped us with editing and, and uh, all of the editors and everything. Uh, it was a lot of fun. As the side mount divers uh, in the audience know, uh, side mount is very much a topic of heated deb debate, uh, different methods and uh, philosophies and things like that and so there were a lot of those heated debates here internally at the office and, and it was just a lot of fun to be a part of um, <clears throat> and we're very proud of what came out of all of that uh, and what we'd like to do is take a few minutes to talk about the differences between SDI and TDI side mount um, and you know who qualifies for the SDI programs who qualifies for the TDI programs what those things are really all about and, and what the differences are. Uh, so we'll start out with talking about the SDI side. Uh, and as most of you know, SDI is our sport diving uh, level of divers and level of training. And these are the divers who are you know, not primarily interested in decompression diving or going into overhead environments like advanced rec and cave and things like that. Uh, they're diving with nit nitrox mixtures up to 40% oxygen. Uh, and their maximum depth is, is usually around 130 feet. Um, so when we're talking about these sport divers, uh, why would they be interested in diving side mount? What, what are the benefits for them? Uh, you know, most people typically think of, you know, dual tanks and things like that as being more of a technical uh, equipment configuration. Uh, but side mount really does have a lot of great advantages for sport divers as well. Uh, one of those big advantages is going to be longer bottom times. So uh, now that you have twice as much gas because uh, you're carrying two tanks, dives are no longer going to be gas supply limited for the most part. Uh, it's mainly going to be no decompression limit uh, limited. And this becomes extremely beneficial for multi-level diving uh, where, you know, if you're thinking about doing a dive from uh, a shore diving location where you can, you know, where you're not worried about boat schedules and things like that, uh, real easy to walk off shore uh, in a place like Bonaire. Uh, and travel the distance of two or three dive sites over the course of a couple hours. Uh, you know, depth ranges from 60 to 30 feet uh, in there. And, and with side mount tanks, you can do that without a problem. You're not worried about no decompression limits because it's a multi-level dive and you can, you know, do a lot of the dive nice and shallow and you've got plenty of gas to do it. Uh, so those are the types of things that we see being very be beneficial for sport divers. Uh, it's also great for solo or self-sufficient divers because uh, now they have a truly redundant gas supply. Uh, you know, we see a lot of solo and, and independent divers out there <clears throat> that are, you know, diving with small 2 liter, 13 cubic foot uh, pony bottles. That's just barely enough gas to get them back up to the surface. And now, uh, you know, implementing a, a side mount equipment configuration, those divers now have a truly redundant gas supply. Lots of gas to deal with emergencies and, and get them back up to the surface safely. Uh, it's also extremely comfortable. Uh, for those of you who haven't dove side mount or haven't done a lot of side mount diving, um, it, side mount is extremely comfortable. You don't have a tank on your back. You don't have a valve behind your head to hit, uh, especially when you're taking photographs or, or video, that sort of thing. Um, you trim out really nice, and, and it's just very, very comfortable weight to dive. 
Uh, you also have much easier entries and exits because you can take your tanks down to the water and, and leave them in the water before you put on your exposure protection, you know, your dry suit or your wetsuit, that sort of thing. Um, and then you can go get geared up and then jump in the water where you put on all the heavy stuff, you know, the tanks and, and all of that. <clears throat> it's also extremely streamlined and, and easy to swim through the water, um, which is another huge advantage for sport divers. And kind of the overriding most important reason why side mount is uh, is uh, beneficial for sport divers is it's fun I mean it's it's fun to learn new skills and and it's fun to uh, you know um, play with the new gear and get things uh, organized and, and fitted just right and get things dialed in those types of things are always fun for divers but it's also a very fun uh, configuration to dive in you're extending your uh, bottom times um, you know you're uh, you've got now redundant gas supplies, all that kind of stuff, and it's just a really fun way to dive. <clears throat> Which brings us now into TDI, the technical diving uh, side of things, which is really where side mount diving originally um, kind of came from. You know, we're talking about decompression diving, diving in overhead environments uh, like advanced wreck and caves, that sort of thing. Diving with nitrox mixtures up to 100% oxygen, but also we're talking about extended range diving, trimix, advanced trimix, uh, maximum depths up to 100 meters or 330 feet. Um, <clears throat> and these types of divers can really benefit from side mount as an equipment configuration as well uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, the primary reason and where it really kind of all started uh, is the reduced profile. Uh, you know, we had ca cave divers who were trying to get their way through narrow bedding planes and, and very um, small spaces and that you just could not fit through without or with uh, back mounted doubles on. They would actually have to take those tanks off, push them out in front of them to, to squeeze through those areas. Um, and they decided there has to be a better way. Uh, so came up with side mount, mounting the cylinders on their side to reduce their profile so they could get through those narrow areas. Um, <clears throat> we also have the uh, same comfort benefits that you have when we're talking about the sport divers. Uh, you no longer have that manifold behind your head to hit your head on, uh, which again is good for photographers. Uh, you also have much easier entries and exits, uh, especially when we're dealing with technical diving with lots of cylinders and that kind of thing. We can take all those tanks down either one one at a time or two at a time, leave them in the water, uh, then go ahead and put our exposure protection on and, and uh, all of that, and then walk down to the water. Uh, it's much, much easier uh, uh, to get in and out of the water, especially when diving from shore. Uh, we also have major benefits for uh, technical diving in remote areas. One of the hardest or one of the biggest uh, uh, issues that technical divers used to have was uh, trying to find manifolded doubles in remote locations. You know, you'd have to plan trips uh, for technical diving based on you know who has manifolded doubles uh, set up and available and that sort of thing. And now with side mount, uh, basically you just bring a couple cam straps and some uh, and some clips and, and your BCD and you've got your doubles all set up ready to go. You can turn any single cylinder into now a doubles configuration um, by utilizing side mount. <clears throat> you also have a truly redundant gas supply. Uh, one of the huge advantages of diving manifolded doubles is you only have to breathe off of one of the regulators and you only have one SPG to, uh, to monitor. Um, but those cylinders are connected, and uh, you know if there is some sort of a major catastrophic failure uh, in between the time when that failure happens and you get the cylinders isolated, you can actually lose a lot of the gas out of both cylinders. When we're talking about side mount, now we have truly redundant gas supply. We have totally separate cylinders. They're not connected at all. So if you do have a failure, a catastrophic failure in one of the cylinders, it's really easy to shut it down or isolate it, and you've saved all of the gas in the unaffected, unaffected cylinder. Um, so it, it can really help in, in catastrophic uh, failure emergencies and things like that. It's also very easy to manage uh, regulator failures as well. Because of where the valves are located, it's right down below your arms. And uh, if you do have a regulator that starts to free flow, real easy to reach down and shut it down within seconds. Uh, and on top of that, if you do have a free-flowing regulator, you can actually still access the gas that's in that cylinder after you shut it down uh, by feathering that valve if you, if you need that gas for your exit. Uh, so very beneficial for a lot of reasons for technical divers as well. <clears throat> so then, what's the difference in the course content? 
between SDI and TDI. Uh, this is probably one of the most common questions that we get here at headquarters, uh, you know, not just when it comes to side mount, but also on our nitrox programs and things like that. You know, we have a lot of programs that are similar, um, but programs, the SDI programs are developed for sport divers, whereas the TDI programs are developed for technical divers. It's the same thing goes for, uh, for side mount as well. Uh, when we're talking about the actual content of the SDI side mount course versus the TDI side mount course, uh, both courses are going to be primarily equipment configuration type courses. But when we're talking about SDI, uh, really what we're training those divers is you know how to set up the equipment, how to get it fitted properly for them, how to manage it in the water, as well as really the only new skill that you're going to be teaching them uh, is a little bit more complex gas management because now that diver has two independent gas supplies, uh, which requires a new level of awareness that they might not have been uh, um, that might not have been necessary for them in the past. You know, they're monitoring two different SPGs, they're switching regulators throughout the dive, uh, that sort of thing. On the TDI side, uh, again, it's mainly an equipment configuration course. Um, so, you know, you're, you're mainly tr teaching them all about the uh, how to set up and fit the equipment and getting everything tweaked and, and dialed in for them. <clears throat> but you have several, or you have a, a wider range of potential students. Uh, this course can be offered as an entry-level technical type course, uh, if you think about it compared to like an intro to tech course. For somebody who is either just starting to get into technical diving uh, or it maybe even isn't 100% certain that they want to get into technical diving, you can use this course to get them familiar with the equipment and start to get the experience and also start to teach them more advanced skills such as SMB deployment, uh, more advanced finning techniques like back kicking and helicopter turns, that sort of thing. Uh, and you're also going to have them working on performing skills, neutrally buoyant, uh, that sort of thing. You can even throw in, you know, valve shutdowns and stuff like that. <clears throat> so that's kind of one uh, end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is you could have a very experienced uh, technical diver or, you know, an advanced trimix diver or a full cave uh, diver who is now looking to utilize side mount as a uh, a new tool in their in their tool bag, if you will, um, you know, to maybe access different areas of the cave that were not available to them in back mount, uh, that sort of thing. So that type of diver, uh, you know, we're training them to utilize this equipment configuration to dive at the level uh, that they're already trained to. So, you know, if we're thinking about training somebody who's already an advanced trimix diver as a side mount diver, uh, you're going to have to, you know train them how to carry two or three stage bottles or decompression cylinders. Uh, and same thing with CAVE, you know, make sure that they're able to um, complete all of the CAVE related skills uh, in a side mount uh, equipment configuration. So you can really kind of tweak the course based on who your student is. And, and so there's a wide range of potential students on the TDI side and, and that course is going to be really geared um, and tweaked for whoever those students are. So at the end of the day, whether it's an SDI course or a TDI course, uh, like all of SDI, TDI, and ERDI standards, there's a lot of flexibility in there. We give you a minimum set of requirements that need to be met, and you guys as instructors can really go out there and fine-tune that skill set and, and fine-tune the course content to make sure that it's fitting your students' needs um, on an individual basis. <clears throat> the great thing about our materials uh, for the side mount program is the side mount materials actually cover that full spectrum, the sport diver through the advanced trimix or full cave diver. Uh, it really covers everything in between there because again the materials are a uh, kind of a wide range um, of, uh, of equipment configurations and skill sets and everything and, and it really is kind of an all-inclusive uh, package. <clears throat> All right. So then, what's the missing piece? Uh, if you're not currently teaching side mount programs, why not? Um, you know, this is a question that we get a lot at headquarters as well. You know, what do I need to do to become an SDI or a TDI side mount instructor? Uh, and that's what we'd like to take a couple minutes to talk about here real quick. <clears throat> First of all, we'll talk about the SDI process, how to become an SDI side mount instructor. Just like any uh, SDI specialty, you have two options, either the administrative upgrade or completing an SDI side mount instructor course with a qualified instructor trainer. 
on the administrative side, if, if you want to apply just for the administrative upgrade, that's fine. Uh, really all you need to do is complete the SDI side mount, or I'm sorry, the SDI um, instructor upgrade request form that you can find in the standards and procedures manual. Fill that out. On page two, uh, you're going to fill out procedure number two uh, for that upgrade. And in the uh, notes section there, uh, you're just going to write out the experience that you have diving side mount. Um, minimum requirement is having completed at least 25 side mount dives. Really important though to note that if you are applying for that administrative upgrade, um, you know, make sure that you have a pretty broad range of knowledge of all of the side mount equipment configurations and, and philosophies and stuff like that out there. Uh, really, really important for side mount diving because there is such a broad spectrum and lots of different ways that equipment can be configured and, and each manufacturer does it a little bit different and even within specific manufacturers there might be different models of harnesses that uh, mount the cylinders a little bit different so you want to be aware of all of those different uh, possibilities so you can help train your student on the equipment that they have if they've already purchased it that sort of thing make sure that you're able to do that the other option is by completing an SDI side mount instructor course with a qualified instructor trainer and uh, <clears throat> The minimum requirement to enter the side mount instructor course, the SDI side mount instructor course, is having completed at least 10 side mount dives. Um, but again, really important that you are knowledgeable of, of a wide variety of, of side mount equipment configurations so you can um, best assist your students and get them and help them reach their goals. So to become a TDI side mount instructor, uh, similar process, we have two different options, either the administrative upgrade option uh, or completing an instructor course. Same types of requirements. Uh, the main difference is uh, on the administrative side you have to complete 25 logged technical side mount dives and for the instructor course you have to have logged at least 10 technical side mount dives uh, to qualify for the instructor course. Uh, so what do we consider a technical side mount dive? Uh, and that's really any dive involving decompression, additional cylinders, uh, overhead environments such as caves, wrecks, or mines, uh, that sort of thing. That's what we're talking about um, when we say technical side mount dive. So the, on the administrative upgrade uh, option. Uh, if you're already a qualified or if you're already an active TDI instructor, uh, you can just apply for the upgrade by completing the TDI instructor registration form and again supplying some documentation about the diving experience that you have, uh, technical side mount diving experience that you have. And then in order to qualify for the instructor course, again, uh, you need to be able to provide your instructor trainer uh, with verification of at least 10 technical side mount dives um, before you can enter that course. Uh, again, on the TDI side, extremely important that you're very familiar with uh, the wide range of equipment uh, options that are out there uh, so you can best support your, your students' needs and, and um, help them reach their goals. <clears throat> and one more thing about the uh, instructor registration forms, uh, if you are operating and teaching within a region outside of the United States, please make sure that you send those instructor registration forms into your regional office if you are uh, within the United States, Canada, or any other uh, country that, that falls under World HQ as your regional office, you can send it directly to the training department and we'll get that process for you. All right. All right. Well, thank you, John, very much. That was beautifully said. And on behalf of uh, John, myself, all the departments here, and all the people that participated in this program, we want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to this um, recorded version of the webinar on why you should be teaching sign out. We certainly do help that it has been informative and that you have uh, gotten something more out of this than you had before, whether it was from who your students should be, who your demographic should be, and what you can teach them. So really quick, just to recap what we went over is uh, what makes SCI TDI side mount materials different from the other programs that are out there and materials that are out there. SCI and TDI side mount, the differences and the benefits of diving side mount, and why aren't you teaching side mount? Come on, guys. Uh, John pretty much laid out the path for you to get there. 
We hope to hear from you, and we hope to see you get those upgrades. So thank you again for joining us, and again, on behalf of everyone here at World HQ and all our regional offices, thanks for taking the time. Have a great day. Thank you.